boy, oh boy, oh boy. Nothing can be easy, guys. Not one single thing, especially if you own a Ford. So anyone who might be seeing this video as the first video you've ever seen from me, because I'm hoping this is a big, big thing. I'm hoping this will be a big, big thing. My car, my 2020 Ford Mustang, which has been relatively good to me up until just not long ago, has suffered a catastrophic ev failure event, something to do with the engine. OK, so it's currently sitting at a dealership waiting to be fixed. Well, after a week and a half of waiting for answers that the uh, service department was going back and forth with Ford about in the, the Ford's warranty department, they have come to the conclusion that Ford has decided they do not want to honor their warranty for my vehicle. And the reason why, oh, the reason why is great. But let's go ahead and, and recap the whole situation up until now. Uh, when I bought this car, I bought it to get out of a troublesome, unreliable money pit. That was my 2014 Ford Taurus SHO. It was a fun car. It was a quick, fast car. It was a comfortable car. The one thing it wasn't was reliable, at least in my case. It was one problem after another. I had three warranty claims on that car, which were all done through a third-party aftermarket warranty I bought with the purchase of the car. And unfortunately, when the car suffered yet another issue, my warranty had ran out, which prompted me to get rid of that car and to get something else that was new with a new car warranty, fresh, no miles. That way I wouldn't have any issues. So that's why I got the 2020 Mustang and I got the EcoBoost because I wanted something that was cheaper. I wanted something that was good on gas. And, you know, that's what I got. And it's cheaper than a new GT unless I bought a used GT, but I didn't want to use car again after going through the troubles I went with the SHO. The Mustang has been really good to me up until now. I have driven it a lot. I have made a few trips back and forth between Florida and Maryland multiple times. I racked up a lot of miles on it very quick. I bought it two years ago, three years ago. No, it's only been two years now. And it's already got 48,000 miles on it. And ever since pretty much 10,000 miles, the car has had aftermarket parts on it. Eventually, you know, they, they grew as I've had the car. I didn't just slap them all on at once. But the first set of parts I put on was the Mishimoto intake and the, uh, the catch can, the Mishimoto catch can. They were the first parts to go on. And then I got the Mishimoto charge pipes. They were they also went on very early. So those parts have been on the car pretty much ever since 10,000 miles. Then I opted to get a JMS Boost Max. That way it could get a teeny weeny little bit more power out of the car without having to flash tune it and therefore extremely ruining my chances of ever you know, having warranty work done in case something happened. Having a tuned vehicle is like case numero uno, like the top number one reason why warranty claims are denied is vehicles tuned. Sorry about your luck. You changed all the programming, everything. Bye. I opted not to go that route for that exact reason. So then eventually after the Boost Max came a Turbo Smart Wastegate Actuator, which I opted to get the lesser of the, the versions available with a 12 PSI spring, which is not much more over stock, which is about seven, I think, seven PSI, which the car has been running great. It has been running safe. I've taken multiple data logs of the vehicle running through various things I have done with the car for the content I do on my YouTube channel. And the car has never, according to data logs, there has never been any situations that would have prompted me to think something was unsafe. Those parts have been on the car. The, the, the Boost Max has been on the car for about 25,000 miles or more, maybe. And the wastegate actuator has been on the car for at least 10,000 miles. The last part I have put on the car 
was a uh, cheaper intercooler, stepped intercooler um, for the car to help, you know, keep intake temps more reasonable here in the Florida heat, which is a lot better than what Ford put on the car. So it's an upgrade more than anything. That was the last part I put on the car. And that's it. There's nothing else more done to the car. That is it. And not one of those parts has the capability of causing a situation that would cause engine failure. Okay, so like the in, putting the intake on does not make the turbo breathe so much more better that it's going to ingest more air than the car needs and blow up because that's not how that works. The intercooler is an upgrade over what Ford gives you. In fact, it should be better because the intake temps coming into the car are going to be cooler and not like just ridiculously hot air. So to me, that sounds better. The charge pipes do nothing but move air. The boost max, the boost max only adds one or two PSI of boost. That is hardly anything. And most of the Ford, you know, certified Ford like performance tunes you get on EcoBoost Mustangs, mind you, they do not have one for my particular EcoBoost. So if you have an HPP EcoBoost, they do not have a Ford performance uh, a tune that's warranty safe that you can get. So, but most of those tunes add about two to three PSI more boost usually. Um, and maybe some other adjustments with fueling, maybe timing. I don't know, but they're extremely conservative that you get through Ford. So the, so the boost max is adding about the same, if not less boost than what Ford does with their own tunes for these cars. Okay, so rolling that out, then we have the wastegate actuator. The wastegate actuator does nothing more than open the wastegate. With the higher spring, it basically just opens it a little bit later, a little bit longer. It takes a little bit more effort for it to be pushed open. But the boost stays the same. The car knows how much boost is going in. The wastegate actuator does not control that. The wastegate actuator is just an actuator. It does not have any sensors on it, nothing that controls boost. What does do that is a part that's never been touched on the car, which is the boost solenoid that comes with the car. That is what tells the wastegate actuator when to open, right? The control boost. That's still factory. There is not one single part on this car that has been a problem from ever since I put them on, I chose these parts specifically so they wouldn't be a problem. I did not want to go and do like a full build and, and really screw my chances of ever having warranty work done for this car. That's why I chose these parts and that's why I've been very hesitant to want to tune the vehicle. So I would not cause myself any warranty claim issues. So now that that's all out of the way, what has happened was normally driving Nothing out of the ordinary. The car was running fine. It was hot that day. I will say that. And it has been hot. It's been a, uh, a heat wave coming through Florida here. And it's been consistently like over 100 degrees between the humidity and everything. Like the actual feel like temp has been over 100 degrees. And it was that day when I was out when it happened. So it was hot outside. I'm sorry, Ford, that you your vehicle could not handle the Florida heat, if that be the case, but that's what it was. Otherwise, all conditions were the same as it's ever have been with that car, and it was running fine. It was running fine earlier that day. It was running fine the day before, the week, every, it was just good. And what I had did was, it was just out doing some errands, wasn't far from home, put the car in drag strip mode just to have a little fun before I went back home, put it, locked it down in third gear, rolled into the boost, when boost came in, it made a bunch of noise and then turbo made a weird noise, like a lot of flutter. The car lost power and that was it. I tried restarting the car, but it would not run with feathering the throttle. It would, you know, chug along a little bit, but there was noticeable, uh, like there was a noticeable noise in the engine, which I had figured something had failed. That's when I called the tow truck, had to tow it to the dealership. At the dealership, they have determined through a bore scope that cylinder two, I thought it was two and three, but what I, what the recent information I've been told is cylinder two specifically. 
has damage. Why? What in cylinder two? I don't see the thing is, I don't know the extent of the damage still. I don't know exactly what in cylinder two failed. Um, but all the other cylinders are fine. It's just one cylinder. OK, so one cylinder failed something in there, either the piston, the rod, something in that one specific cylinder failed. But the rest are fine. Once again, not one single part aftermarket part that I've put on that car would have specifically caused any internal engine damage. But even more, it would not have specifically caused a single cylinder, cylinder two, to take a crap. There is no possible way that anything I have done would contribute to specific failure to cylinder two. Okay, we got all that in mind now. So let's move on to the bombshell of the whole story is that Ford denies the warranty on the car. Uh, they're not willing to fix the vehicle. The reason why they're not willing to fix the vehicle is hysterical because they're completely wrong. They're not willing to fix the vehicle because, and this is what was said, and it's a paraphrase, I don't remember word for word, but this is what was said by the service advisor. She told me that the Ford warranty department told her why they decided not to honor the warranty. And they said, because the car has aftermarket parts on it. Ford, I, I hope you're seeing this because I'm going to send this video to everyone and their mother. You cannot deny my warranty because of aftermarket parts. Okay, you can't do that. Why can't you do that? Because the federal law, the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act, says you can't. And of course, I'll put a screenshot of this up on the screen so we can read this together. This is the part of the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act that would apply to this specific situation. A vehicle manufacturer cannot void the warranty of your vehicle due to an aftermarket part unless they can prove that the aftermarket part was the cause or contributed to the failure of the vehicle. Okay, so Ford, you told me aftermarket parts. Which one of my aftermarket parts, the few I do have on the vehicle, contributed to cylinder two failure. Which one? Because until you tell me which one of those parts made cylinder two, just cylinder two fail, I'm going to light a fire under your ass. Okay? Because that's not how this works. And, you know, I went back and forth. I've been back and forth with the, the service advisor and Ford customer service, their, their service department. The first time I had a call for customer service, they advised me that even though they're the ones who make the car, that they can't fix the car because they're not the technicians. The technicians reside at the dealerships. Thanks, guys. I'm, I'm glad that that's how you feel about the things you make. And furthermore, uh, that getting a second opinion at a different dealership is their recommendation. Great. I'm glad <laughs> I'm glad your your customer service team Ford is top notch. They have given me the best information I could possibly get. No, 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 they didn't. That's ridiculous, Ford. Ridiculous. That, that was what was given to me as advice from your customer service representative over your product, which is my vehicle that I do not have because of a failure of your design part that I did not damage or the parts on my car damaged. So after getting off the phone with that customer service representative, I called the service advisor back and explained that. And she said to me that this happens all the time, that this is what they have been doing. And even on her end of the whole situation for not just me, but other customers that she has to deal with, that has become a massive pain and headache for them to ever get anything done. She advised me to call them back and start asking for supervisors and, and just trying to work my way up the ladder to speak to more people. So I took it into her advice and uh, I called back, got a different customer service representative, re-explained the situation and, you know, I prompted my, you know, interest 
you know, that I really wanted to speak to a supervisor or someone higher up, they wouldn't hand off the phone. She told me that they, the customer service department, cannot do much more than take the phone call at this point. It is through the warranty department. They are the ones who make the decisions. If I have an appeal or if I want to make an appeal to the, to the decision of not honoring the warranty, then I have to do that with the warranty department. Well, unfortunately, they gatekeep their customers from directly communicating with their warranty department. So it, this is what they were telling me, at least. So in order for me to make an appeal with the warranty department, she told me that I have to contact the dealership and they have to submit an appeal on my behalf because they are the only ones that are able to speak to the warranty department. I'm just punching in a quick note here. So Ford gatekeeping the customer from the warranty department and having to go through the service department is evidently something relatively new because a service advisor has no clue about it. And to me, that seems to indicate that this is a relatively new process for Ford. I guess there was a point not long ago where the customer could reach out to the warranty department directly and appeal certain decisions. Uh, but that was, I guess, recently changed. So now all warranty decisions and appeals must go to the dealership. So much for Ford wanting to do away with dealerships and uh, limiting their interactions with them. Hmm. Looks like they're making them more part of the process. Interesting. So here's the whole situation. Obviously, Ford cannot, by law, deny my warranty claim because of aftermarket parts. They have not specified which part that they deemed responsible for this failure. So at this point, it just seems like they are trying to get out of paying a warranty claim. Now, this does not surprise me considering, you know, the, the recent news that's come out from Ford this year of them losing profit over warranty claims. So for them trying to pull this crap doesn't surprise me. And, and sadly, it seems like Ford's not the only auto manufacturer trying to wrongfully turn down warranty claims on their products. It seems like Toyota has done this with someone who bought their car. It didn't even modify it. It was just driving it the way Toyota, you know, designed it to be driven and advertised it to be driven. And uh, I know other companies have also been uh, very, very hesitant to fix their product if something goes wrong. Even though Hyundai and Kia having the best warranty in the land, even they have become very particular to what they want to fix and what they don't want to fix through their warranty. So I think we'll just add four to the list of these shady practices coming from these auto manufacturers. And I really want you to share this video. I, I'm going to share this video in every platform I'm currently on. And I want this video to try to get out there. I want this to be as big of a deal is that dude in his Toyota who blew up on the track driving it the way he was supposed to and the way Toyota advertised the car be driven? I want this to be that big of a deal because I want these manufacturers to get a god dang message without their consumer. They would not be in business, okay? And I tell you, regardless of the situation with this, this will be my last new Ford vehicle because if I get another Ford vehicle and if I breathe on it, if I fart in the seat and something breaks, and if Ford denies the warranty because I farted in their seat, I will go nuts. I do not want that situation. If they are going to simply void warranties because of aftermarket parts, I do not want another vehicle from them ever again, at least a new one or a vehicle that's still under warranty. Because the next Ford vehicle I get, I assure you that if it's Still in warranty, I will not give a crap because I will be the warranty. But that is not now, and that is not the situation I'm looking to get. I'm looking to get my dang car fixed because right now, I have no way of getting around. I have no transportation to nothing. I am stuck in my home waiting for answers. And the answers have been, we're denying your blown engine due to parts you've put on your car, which is not an acceptable answer. So please, share this video everywhere blow this freaking video up blow it up ford needs to get a message and i'm sending the message very clearly first thing ford needs to do is make the situation right by honoring their warranty and fixing their 
product fixing their engine that obviously seemed to have its own isolated issue in one particular cylinder. And then once Ford fixes that, I would love for Ford. Now, this is probably a stretch, but I would love Ford try to give a little bit of a damn about who keeps their business afloat and uh, not make it completely unnecessarily hard to have their product fixed when it fails. That is something Ford really needs to work on. Now, if Ford doesn't want to keep having warranty claims, then maybe they need to spend a little bit more money for manufacturing of the vehicle to ensure that the components they're using are of good enough quality to not prematurely break and causing them to shell out millions in warranty repairs. But I'm not a CEO. I don't run the Ford Motor Company and none of that is my decision to make. But I would love for them to try to figure that one out because that's pretty important. Same for all auto manufacturers for that matter, not just Ford. I suspect that things aren't really being easier on audio manufacturers. And well, I get that. However, you still need to honor your warranty guys, because if you don't, then things have to get a little bit more out of hand. You know what I'm saying? All right. So glad that we got that out of the way. That's the update on my car, my situation. And until there's further updates, this is going to be what it is. Got any uh, additional comments you want to add to the discussion here on this? Please go ahead, leave them in the comment section below. But I think that's going to wrap it up here for this video.